Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we'll be talking about how 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared is often indicated as the upper limit of intensity for red light therapy, photobiomodulation, low-level laser therapy, whatever you want to call it. Now this first quote says, typically power density levels are maintained within the range of 0.1 to 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared to minimize the risk of thermal damage. So we're gonna see a pattern that a lot of times the limit to intensity is the thermal effects because photobiomodulation and low level laser therapy are by definition non-thermal. So a lot of the parameters are specifically chosen to minimize the thermal effects. So another article says in normal circumstances, it uses relatively low fluences of 0.04 up to 50 joules per centimeter squared and power densities less than 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So you can kind of see the opposite is usually the carrot is facing the opposite way when companies are claiming to be greater than 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared. We, I often see in the paperwork is less than 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared, which is kind of ambiguous because if a company says it's greater than 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared or whatever their number is currently, uh, it kind of makes you think of like, well, what's the actual number? Because if it's greater than, is it 101? Is it 150, 200, 1000? Like uh, greater than a number without any boundaries is kind of an irrational number. It has no limit. Now this is a great article that's free to read and goes over a lot of the important light parameters for photobiomodulation. Now they're talking about the linear reciprocity, the law of reciprocity that basically says it doesn't matter what your intensity is as long as you get your right joules per centimeter squared. So if you're trying to get, you know, 10 joules per centimeter squared, you can use high intensity or low intensity. And as long as you calculate your exposure time correctly and get the proper joules per centimeter squared, then you can use whatever intensities and exposure times you want. And, you know, generally that may be true. They say generally within these ranges of 1 to 100 joules per centimeter squared and 1 to 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared, you know, you could expect some general linear reciprocity. However, this also means that above 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared and or above 100 joules per centimeter squared, your linear equations do not apply. So if you use my dosing calculator and you've got super high intensity, that might not be a good way to estimate your dose anymore because you've gone beyond, you know, the general range. There's always kind of limitations and boundaries and scope uh, to some of these equations of when they apply and when they don't apply. Here's a quick one from a recent article. PBM employs light with power densities ranging from fractions of milliwatts per centimeter squared up to 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So any limit at all is breaking all these marketing narratives that just say, oh, get the highest, most powerful thing and just blast yourself and pray for a good result. Uh, you know, the, the fact that there's any limit, if you don't want to believe it's 100, there has to be a limit somewhere uh, you know, so 100 is, again, is just kind of a general limit. If you go up to 101, is, have you completely broken the system? No, you know, I mean, they have to put some relative thresholds, even though everything's on a gradient, it's not like a hard cutoff of if you go to 101, you suddenly have problems and 99 is the best intensity. Cause if you say, oh, 100 is the limit, that means the best intensity is 99. You know, we're, we're kind of getting into ranges that, hey, you know, we're in margins of safety away that you can get really good results with five to 30 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So you're, you know, multiple factors away from 100 and you're doing really good again there's always exceptions there's always high and lows uh, but again the general trend of a lot of these studies say is at least your starting point is below 100. the world association of laser therapy recommends limiting the delivered power density or irradiance to less than 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared and total energy density or h below 10 joules per centimeter squared so again, limit to intensity. I mean, again, if you don't want to believe 100, believe whatever you want. We're going to find the limit to intensity. If you want to be a human experiment and help the world find that out, 
then that's great. Just tell us your, your honest results of how you're feeling. All right, so here's a good quote. PBM therapy was developed more than 50 years ago. However, there's no common agreement on the parameters and protocols for its clinical application. So this is really important because all the influencers and brands will be like, oh, it's so confusing. Red light therapy is so confusing. We don't know how to dose it. We're telling you which products are best. We're telling you all these medical claims, but then you ask them for a dosing protocol call they're like oh nobody knows you know and then they're laughing all the way to the bank so again there's layers of confusion and mystery that they try to apply and you know that's all just methods of control and bamboozling you can get really good results with reasonable intensities reasonable exposure times there's nothing too fancy about it so some research teams have recommended the use of a power density less than 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared so who do you want to believe the research teams or some influencers and brands using solar power meters uh, you know I mean I was like uh, you know and an energy density of 4 to 10 joules per centimeter squared other groups recommended as much as 50 joules per centimeter squared at the tissue surface so again that's kind of the limit if you're trying to do deep tissue treatment there you get 50 on the surface of the skin but obviously what penetrates and what actually reaches the deeper tissue is going to be greatly attenuated greatly diminished um, so that's why you know you put the limit of 50 on the skin and but what actually reaches the deeper tissue is going to be much lower parameters like wavelength energy, fluence, power, irradiance, pulse mode, treatment duration, and repetition rate can be applied in a wide range. So a lot of those I covered in my previous video. Here's another quick one. Whereas the usage of 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared and lower should pose no safety concerns as the predicted temperature rise is an order of magnitude away from the cell property change threshold. So again, the, the heating effects are often the limit. Sometimes they use pulsing, you know, so the rapid on and off, you can have higher peak intensities, but still allow, allow the skin to cool. So there's a lot of techniques. If you don't want to cause heating, but you want high intensities, you use pulsing or scanning or cooling, you know, active cooling of the tissue with fans or uh, icing the skin or whatnot. So again, the limits to intensity is often related to the heat effects. And here we have an excellent review article, photobiomodulation for melasma treatment. And it says maintaining a low irradiance less than 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared is critical to prevent undesired thermal effects and the initiation of reactions unrelated to PBM. So again, notice, you know, it's not necessarily good or bad. We're just trying not to do heat therapy. So particularly for melasma, they're trying to mitigate any heat effects. So again, influencers will always push the limits and try to cross the boundaries and they'll say, oh, well, that means the best intensity for melasma is 99 milliwatts per centimeter squared, <laughs> which, you know, may or may not be true. But again, you can have a huge margin of safety and get good skincare results at 10 to 30 milliwatts per centimeter squared far away from the heat effects you know far away from the rapid ROS that you can get from high intensities and or heat uh, so again you know at least we've got some upper limit of 100 if, if we can at least stay below that uh, then I won't have to keep you know freaking out that people are scorching themselves with uh, what claims to be red light therapy devices but they're actually heat therapy devices all right and just to show you I'm not just cherry picking uh, here's one article that gives a range of 5 to 150 milliwatts per centimeter squared so say maybe it's 150 maybe the limit uh is is 150 we can push push the limits so now now the best intensity is 149 according to how an influencer would interpret this you know, definitely can't be five or six you know that, that's for sure how are they supposed to sell products at only five or six so again here's another review article excellent article on cancer induced side effects it's a walt position paper so again they reference a power density range from 5 to 150 milliwatts per centimeter squared you know i was trained as an engineer to be very conservative with interpreting safety ranges so if someone gives me a range like this i'm gonna start on the lowest possible end and and see if that works so that's it for today remember this narrative about 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared being the best or being the bare minimum uh, you know, that got started based on solar power meter measurements, measurements that were falsely high by 2x. So then they built up this false scientific narrative 
to confirm that false measurement. So obviously we need to question the science more, get back to basics. We need to unlearn what we've learned about 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared, start digging back into the science. And so I have to start with baby steps. If the only thing you've learned from this is that there's some sort of hypothetical limit of 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared, 150, or maybe it's higher, you know, whatever it is, there has to be some sort of reasonable cutoff to say, hey, enough's enough. We're, we're creating too much risk on the consumer. And then we have margins of safety, often, you know, five to 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So we have a huge margin of safety from that upper limit of, you know, maybe it's 100, 150, but what we should typically be using at least starting out with is five to 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared. If you really think you need higher intensities then you could try to, you know, increment it up. So that's my bit for today. Thanks for tuning in.